Hello everybody, this is Khalif PvP bring another video for Guild Wars 2 and this time we're gonna do a condition warrior, essentially a condition berserker using essentially your bleeds from sword and then fire, your burning from your torch for your berserker skills to do a ton of condition damage and I think with the exception of maybe um, Thief, actually probably more than Thief, This the, the amount of condition damage this build has is ungodly. You've probably seen a variation of this build, it's very popular style. Um, I just kind of morphed it and added my personal touches to it where I thought it was lacking. So without further ado, here's my Berserker Condi build for Warrior. So the first thing I want to talk about is the weaknesses and the strengths of this build. So let's start it with the weaknesses. You have really no Condi Cleanse. Uh, so if you get stuck with a lot of bleeding, a lot of poison, chill, you're kind of going to be having a tough time to, uh, to cleanse all those stuff out. And then the next one is no range. Both your weapon slots are melee and I would say it's somewhat mid-range like. So if, if somebody's able to kite you a lot, you're going to again be in a really tough situation. And it's also a bit low on mobility. I mean, you have a couple leap finishers, but other than that, um, you really don't have a way to get to your target as soon as you can. There's definitely other classes that can stay on target much better than you can. For the pros, you have really high DPS. I mean, this is largely coming from your burn stacks. And if you spec it correctly, you're going to be doing about 4k per tick. Um, you have high CCs because you have a, a 3 second stun as well as depending on your wild card slot, you can also CC for that. And then you also have CC breaks. And it, uh, unlike other classes, when you break out a CC, you get a ton of uh, toughness and ton of uh, health from, from the healing. And then lastly, really good AoE pressure. Um, this is actually probably one of the best ones I've seen where your one of your skills is a giant AoE burning field. Uh, so you really, really be able to use that skill to kind of maximize your AoE pressure. For classes, there's few classes you want to kind of be, be mindful of. Uh, one is Necro with their condies and their condi transfers. That's actually one of the, the biggest things really because once you put all those bleed stacks, they can transfer that right to you and you're just gonna get absolutely destroyed. And then uh, rangers because they can kite you a lot. Uh, they can just run around in circles and you really don't have a gap closer. I mean, you have your block that you can um, you can use, but other than that, you're, you're kind of shit out of luck. And then finally, thieves, because they can evade a lot of your attacks. So if you go for a stun and they evade it, you're going to be missing out on a lot of DPS there. So those three classes you kind of want to be, be aware of. Now on to our equipment. We have Mace Torch and Sword Shield. For the Mace Torch, we are going to pick up for the Sigils, Geomancy, and Doom. So that's causing bleed for 7 seconds when you weapon swap. And then Poison uh, for 8 seconds on weapon swap. And then for the sword shield, you have agony, bleed duration increased by 20%, and geomancy, which makes it bleed, uh, again, pretty much bleed for 7 seconds. For the armor runes, we are going with rune of so that essentially condition damage increase and burning duration increase. The next one, the essentially the amulet, this one's kind of tricky because... You can go with Carrion, obviously, which is your default, I would say, condition damage build amulet. Or you can go with Viper. Um, I personally like Carrion over Viper, and there's a, there's a reason because of that. Viper inc gives you a nice bit of expertise that increases condition duration by essentially about 37%. It gives you a nice, if we switch over, it gives you a six and a half second uh, burning duration on Flames of War, about uh, six and a half on Blazebreaker, and pretty much all your other ones is about six and a half seconds of burning duration. Now, if you go with Carrion, you're only about five and a quarter. So you're really losing out about 2065 versus 1837. So 
So it's really about 200 or so damage. Um, you know, it's not too, too much. But the big thing with Viper is you're losing out on a ton of health. 19-22 versus 28-22. Uh, and, uh, and for me personally, I like that cushion in in health. So 28 versus 19, that's almost a 9k uh, health pool. That, that's essentially one heal, right? And uh, for that reason, I, I really use Carrion over Viper. Because even though you get that duration increase, to me personally, I just think, you know, your target is usually probably going to be dead if you go through your whole cycle put the stacks that you're going to put on there they're really going to die in five seconds or so maybe six um so it's not necessarily a beneficial thing to increase your duration because sometimes it might be overkill because your target might be dead um whereas in carrion you you have you know essentially the amount of your conditions will last enough time for you to kill your target in addition to that it gives you that nice health pool all right now let's talk about the skills so our skills are pretty much based ar around getting adrenaline as much as possible because our build is essentially using berserk and our burst skills to get some dots and conditions on our target so for that reason pretty much all our skills are some way or another related to getting adrenaline so our healing skill to the limit gets us 30 adrenaline as well as a 9k heal. Our first skill, Outrage, breaks us out of stun, puts a burning on our target and gets adrenaline and then gets adrenaline based on the number of targets around you. Our second skill, Shattering Blow, is also a rage skill. This one I really like because it gets you stability, puts a bleeding on your target and get pretty much blocks attacks uh, in front of you. In addition to that, it gets you a nice 10 adrenaline. And then finally, Sundering Leap. It's a leap skill, uh, puts a nice vulnerability and cripple on your target, as well as the burning from our, our traits. And then it gets you a 10 adrenaline off the bat, and if it hits a target, it gets you 20 adrenaline. So it pretty much almost maxes your adrenaline bar out. For your elite skill, we're going to get Headbutt, which is it's going to... Um, it's going to stun your target and then stun you as well. Uh, it's, your target's going to be stunned for about three seconds. You're going to be stunned for a second. Um, and then essentially what you're going to be doing is using Headbutt immediately followed by Outrage, which breaks you right out. That essentially gets you a nice three seconds to wail on your target. One thing I want to quickly mention is the third skill. This one, I it's kind of... Uh, up in the air, it's a wild card almost. Instead of Sundering Leap, uh, sometimes I like to pick up Wild Blow. Uh, essentially, this is a little bit more of a CC, so I can get that knockback on the target and kind of aim it, usually aim it, try to aim it rather, uh, towards other people so it knocks them back as well. If you want a, a lower cooldown knockback, you can pick up Kick. Or if you want a Leap Finisher so you can combo with your Fire Fields, you can pick up Bulls Charge that gives you a nice leap as well as some CC. Alright, so now let's talk about our specializations. Uh, for the first one, this one's uh, again a little bit of wild card. You can pick either uh, Arms or Strength. But I personally like Discipline. Uh, this one, Versatile Rage, you gain Adrenaline on Weapon Swap. Then Warrior Spirit, you, gain, you run faster when you're wielding melee weapons and immo in movement skills break immo immobilizations and uh, so this skill is a really melee heavy build so if you get cc especially uh rooted you're gonna be having some tough times especially trying to stay on target so your savage leap as well as sundering leap they'll both remove your immobilizations for the next kind of minor one weapon swapping recharges faster again that allows us to get adrenaline a little bit faster uh, and then brawler's recovery weapon swapping removes conditions this bill really doesn't have that much condition removal unfortunately so you really got to rely on those weapon swaps to cleanse yourself and then finally this is kind of these two skills are the main reasons i picked this up uh, weapon swapping gets you uh might which increases our condition damage as well as burst skills recharge 15 percent faster and then 
to top it all off burst mastery burst skills deal more damage which we don't really care about what we what do we do care about is the uh, the refund on adrenaline use so it, it restores 33 percent of the adrenaline used so putting this perspective you have three bars of adrenaline uh it returns 33% so it essentially returns one bar and you can pretty much top that off by using things like Outrage, things like Shattering Blow or Sundry Leap will bring you back up to full so you can reuse that Primal Burst skill. The next two specializations are what I would consider required. You really need to have these to build out your build. Uh, the, the, big, the, the second one, defense, you're going to pick up uh, thick skin, you automatically get that. It's not really too important, uh, you just get a toughness increase when you're above your health threshold. Uh, shield master, reflect missiles when you're blocking, gain might when you block an attack. Uh, this is really useful because your, your shield stance gets you some nice amount of might so you can top off that condition damage. You get gain adrenaline he health based on adrenaline spent. Uh, usually when you're doing your primer burst, you're going to go through three bars. So you're going to be topped off, generally speaking, about a 6k or so health in 15 seconds. And then finally, oh well not finally, um, you get armored attack, gain power based on your toughness. You're going to have a lot of toughness in here, so you kind of want to top that off. Uh, you could, for example, switch this off to endure pain if you want to be a little bit more tanky. Uh, I, the reason I didn't pick it up is because it has a, to me personally, has a little bit long cooldown for my taste, especially in PvP. Uh, and I just wanted that little bit more toughness, especially because our final scale, for example, gets us a thousand toughness, right? So I really wanted that, that power so I can do a little bit more damage. Your second minor trait, or third minor trait, gain retaliation when you block or strike by a critical hit. You're gonna, again, you're going to be doing a lot of blocking with this skill. So you're going to get some nice retaliation as well as it gives you a nice toughness boost. And then finally, this is actually one of the big, big skills. Um, gain toughness when you when you break out of, uh, toughness and health when you break out of a stun. You have your headbutt and outrage combo. That essentially means you're going to be getting an 8 seconds of 1,000 damage. Or oh, 1,000, uh, not damage, 1,000 toughness. Uh, makes you really, really tanky. Last but not least, Berserker. Uh, in your things, you're going to be picking up Last Blaze. Essentially, when you use a raid skill set nearby foes on fire, uh, we have all our skills are pretty much raid skills. So nice little fire damage coming out of that. And then uh, in the middle one, we're going to get Heat and Soul, which reduces cooldowns on Torch, which is our second uh, weapon set, as well as give you a nice 150 condition damage while wielding a, a Torch. So kind of increasing our damage. And then we pick up the Miner, Fatal Frenzy, Game Boons when you enter Berserk mode. Uh, and then finally, King of Fires, which increases the duration of burning you apply by 33%. Gain fire aura when you critical hit an enemy, and you're going to be critical hitting quite decently. Um, and then I think the biggest is when you damage, uh, when you use a berserk skill, you detonate fire aura, dealing a shit ton of damage. You're gonna be doing um, essentially 5k damage when you hit hit a burst skill while you have fire aura and, and pretty much the combo is you want to get your flames of war followed by the leap so you can get the fire aura there you go the fire aura then kind of combo that up with your burst skill and you just end up doing ton of damage so that pretty much wraps up the video here folks hopefully you guys liked it uh, if you have any suggestions please do leave it in the comment section and until next time it's Khalif PvP.